What's up ladies and gentlemen, Vinruki here for a, another video. And in this video, we are going to do something a little bit special. Um, as you guys know, if you guys are, you know, if you've watched my stream, if you've been watching my YouTube channel for a while, um, I've been playing a lot of Necro Lord Frostmage. Um, it's very meta now. I'm not trying to sound like a hipster, but I was playing it before, you know, it really did kind of gain popularity in 9.2, but I think the build is really, really strong now. And um, from playing it a lot last patch and playing it a lot this patch, I wanted to share some of my information. So we actually, we hit a sub goal in my stream. So this is gonna be kind of a comprehensive Necro Lord Frost Mage guide. There are some other Frost Mage builds that might be viable. You know, some people think that, you know, Kyrian might be okay, like Venthyr could be okay, uh, but we're not gonna focus on that. Even Night Fae could be okay, but we're not gonna focus on that. We're gonna focus on the build that I think overall is the best right now. It's absolute best. And that is going to be the Deathborn Frost Mage. And before I ended my stream today, uh, we went through all the things that kind of wanted me to talk about. So without further ado, uh, we're just going to get into it. Now I'm going to get through some of this stuff pretty quick because uh, it's pretty simple. But first, gearing. So um, the legendaries that you want for this build, in my opinion, there is only one. Now, players did experiment with a couple different legendaries like Displayer Command at the beginning. Um, but I think it is very safe to say um, it also feels the best to go with Slick Ice. So Slick Ice is going to be your absolute best legendary. And the way this legendary works is while Icy Veins is active, each Frostbolt you cast up to 10 times increases your cast speed of Frostbolt as well as your damage of Frostbolt by 2%. So as you're chaining Frostbolts um, with Deathborn, you are getting faster or with your icy veins you're getting faster and faster and stronger and stronger frost bolts so because deathborn lasts such a long time and because icy veins last such a long time this ends up having a lot of uptime and you can do a ton of damage with it so for legendaries slick ice is what you're going to be wanting to go with and then of course your second legendary is going to be uh death's fathom this is going to be from the unity um so you're going to use unity but you get death's fathom which um basically when you cast a fireball frostbolt or arcane blast for frost it's obviously frostbolt um you are going to have a chance to proc deathborn or if you're already in deathborn extend your current deathborn and also each frostbolt that shoots out including cleave so if you shoot a frostbolt that cleaves three people you get three percent increased uh spell damage so the longer you have deathborn up the more frostbolts you're casting during it you get more and more and more and more spell power which is really really powerful especially when you combine it with slick ice so those are the two legendaries they're the most fluid um and definitely what i recommend the, i don't think there's a, i don't think you should play a different legendary um personally for this build so that covers the legendary for stats um <clears throat> haste versatility so you want to get up to you know you want to play at least around 30 percent versatility and 30 percent haste now you could go a little bit more versatility if you want you go a little bit more haste uh if you want now most I'll say this really quick. Most of the um, tournament mages and a lot of the mages that are playing Frost are only using the two set for your Covenant gear, or so your uh, tier gear. And uh, that just drops a Comet Storm. Frost spells have a 25% chance to call down a Comet Storm every 20 seconds. Okay. Now we'll talk a little bit more about this later, but most people, when it comes to tier, if you're wondering, um, they are going with the tier helmet and the tier shoulders to keep as much haste and versatility as possible. And then they're going haste versus neck, haste versus cloak, haste versus chest, haste versus bracers, haste versus um, staff. I have the one hander, and this is just for mostly transmog, but you go with the staff. Um, and then um, the haste versatility ring you can buy, and the haste versatility PP ring, and then unity on boots, uh, frostburn on belt, and then the haste versatility gloves and the haste versatility pants. Now I, um, my plan is to do something a little bit different. I am actually going to be running the four set because I think it's really strong. Um, some mages, I don't know why they don't think it's strong. They feel like you maybe give up too much versatility, too much haste. I, I don't believe that to be the case. Um, you can still easily get 30% haste. If you use four set with, with the, the helmet, the shoulders, the gloves, and the pants, you do gain some kind of unwanted mastery, but the crit you gain is actually not bad. Crit believe it or not, is one of the best PV stats for Frost Mages in the game. So I think it's really, really underrated. Um, it's going to help you crit more often. Your shatters are going to be, you know, more effective, crit more often. So I think the damage is uh, strong, and that's what I plan on running. But I'm just letting you know what everyone else does, um, which is just go the two-piece with the versatility. I, however, will run the four set um, with gloves, pants, shoulders, and helmet. Okay? So it's basically like a, a basic gear guide. 
Um, and depending on, you know, if you want more haste, you want more versatility, um, you can gem and enchant that way. Okay. For trinkets, um, you can switch between medallion and the echoing resolve. Uh, echoing resolve, obviously really powerful right now to avoid, um, unwanted interrupts in crowd control. Uh, and I think, especially if you pair it with blink stun. So if you play with icy flows and you have blink stun, um, it's very, very strong because you can just blink out of stuns and then you're just going to be, you know, immune to every second crowd control on yourself. Uh, but you could play just the regular medallion if you're more comfortable with that. Uh, definitely an option um, for your kind of main trinket. Um, in nine out of 10 games, I'll play Alacrity. If there's like a wizard war that I really want to win, maybe I'll put on an Aegis to avoid, you know, getting one shot by other wizards, other Chaos Bolts, etc. But for the most part, I just play Alacrity. I think it's a really safe choice. The extra haste is nice. The extra damage is nice. Uh, but for the most part, as Frost, you're just going to go Alacrity or Aegis and then either the Medallion or the Echoing Resolve. So that's going to cover Trinkets. That's basically just a basic gearing guide. Now, for Conduits and Soulbinds, um, I think the obvious choice is Plague Divisor. Uh, Maryland, it's the only one that I have set up. It's the only one that I use personally. Um, so this is the path that I take. Now, there are, so for potency conduits, you want to use Ice Bite. That's just going to be Ice Lance damage. Icy Propulsion, while Icy Veins is active, your critical strike hit reduces its cooldown. So while your Icy Veins is active, when you're getting a crit, it reduces the cooldown of your Icy Veins. So there's a lot of synergy here with Icy Propulsion, as well as this talent, Thermal Void, which we'll talk about later. And the second effect of Thermal Void is your Ice Lances against frozen targets extend your Icy Veins. So you have this synergy going on with that talent in this conduit where your Icy Veins is getting extended by every time you Ice Lance. And at the same time, all those Ice Lances are lowering the cooldown of your Icy Veins. And that's why Icy Veins has such a high uptime and it's definitely a mechanic you want to know about um, when playing Frost Mage. Next up, we use Gift of the Lich uh, to expand, uh, ex extend your Deathborn. <clears throat> I do apologize. I'm sick right now as I record this, so hopefully uh, it's no big deal. Uh, I'm sure you guys don't care. Um, but in terms of uh, defensive conduits or your endurance conduits, I like to use Tempest Barrier. You gain a shield when you blink. And then personally... Um, if you want to, you can go triple endurance. So this is an option. If you wanted to go to the left side of the tree, you can get a uh, diverted energy as well as cryo freeze, um, or you can kind of mix and match, um, where you go flow of time, um, which is what I play with all pretty much all the time for the shorter cooldown on blink. And then you can choose between grounding surge, uh, which is really good for like wizard mirrors if you want or you just want the shorter counter spell. Um, but I'll let you know that in a lot of games, if I'm ever, if I could ever be a target, I really like having Cryo Freeze. I think it's a really diverse conduit. It, you know, if your healer's in a crowd control chain and you ice block and a warrior's shattering it or it gets mass dispelled, those few ticks of Cryo Freeze could be the difference between living and losing. It's really strong in open world PVP and battlegrounds. It's a full reset on your health, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I think in general, this is a really underrated conduit and I use it almost every game. So. This is kind of my setup. If I knew specifically I was fighting like a wizard cleave, I'd probably go over to grounding surge. But other than that, I play cryo freeze, uh, which is something a little bit different. I don't think a lot of mages end up using cryo freeze uh, as often as I do. Uh, Shivering core for potency. Uh, it's an extra snare. Don't recommend it. I don't think you can really give up the three conduits you do have. They're super strong and um, unrelenting cold is terrible. But you don't want to worry about like basically frozen orb doesn't do any damage. So don't worry about buffing it. All right. So, um, moving along, that's the Conduit and Soulbind. Now we'll go Talents and PvP Talents, okay? So, <clears throat> for Talents and PvP Talents, um, you do have some options, but this is the build I would say you want to run um, more often than not, okay? And I'll explain why. So, in the 15 row, you have Lonely Winter. Um, really important, it's just extra Frostbolt damage. There is, sometimes I try to get cheeky with like Ice Nova, a Water Elemental, and Pet Freeze, but... I wouldn't worry about it. Honestly, I would just get comfortable playing with Lonely Winter. Um, the only use case I've ever found for Ice Nova and Pet Nova is maybe against Windwalker Monks and Demon Hunters to kind of try to stop their mobility. So like if a Monk's rolling, you can Ice Nova him. Or if he's using Flying Serpent Kick and he has Ride the Wind and you Ice Nova him, it's gonna really limit his mobility in a match. You do sacrifice some damage, but um, it just allows you to stay ahead of the mobility. I really wouldn't worry about that. I'd say that's more of like an advanced tactic. Uh, you can just go with Lonely Winter. <clears throat> now, for the 25 row, 
I play Ice Flows basically every game. So I like having Blink out of stuns, especially uh, because the cooldown is so short with the Conduit, you have an 11 second Blink. And also you have Ice Flows, which basically gives you three charge of run casting. So you can use your Ice Flows and then you can run cast spells like Blizzard, like Polymorph, uh, like Frostbolt, which can be really, really useful when you're deathborning and you want to chase people around the pillars, you can just channel those spells while chasing them around the pillar. So really, really strong. You actually get more mobility. A lot of people don't think about this, but you actually get more mobility uh, and uh, I think more of an ability to chase people uh, when using Ice Flows as well as Blink compared to Shimmer. So I basically use it every single game. Um, I really recommend you guys practice with it. And I, I think once you use it, you'll you'll find it's really strong. If you really want to, you can use Shimmer, but um, <clears throat> in general, I, I really think Blink is quite strong. Um, for the 30 row, because you're so mobile, uh, basically it's actually one of the things I like about Frost the most is you can play in Cantor's Flow. You have really good consistent damage with the build. Runa Power is like, you don't ever really want to be stationary, right? So if you think about it, when you use Deathborn and you use Icy Veins, um, people are going to be running away from you and you want to be able to chase them. So running off your rune feels really, really bad. So just having Encanter's Flow for the consistent damage throughout the game uh, is going to be really, really strong. So I would recommend that. For your 35 row, uh, you just want Brain Freeze. Brain Freeze equals damage. Because Frost in PvP is so P uh, Frostbolt focused, um, with this specific build, um, you really want to just have more Brain Freezes as Brain Freezes are basically the way you're going to shatter. You don't have Pet Nova, you don't have Ice Nova, so Frostbolt, Flurry, Frostbolt, Frostbolt is essentially your main way of doing damage. So Frozen Touch, I'd say Auto Lock-In. You have, a, you have a bit of a choice here. Most mages play Frigid Winds for the 10% reduction in uh, movement speed, but you can also play Ring of Frost. Um, I'll tell you, when I use Ring of Frost, um, it'd be against like a Windwalker Monk. So Windwalker Monks have lots of pets, uh, and I basically specifically use Ring of Frost against maybe Cleaves. So like a Ret Warrior or like a Warrior DK that I know is going to go on my Warlock. <clears throat> I'll use uh, Ring of Frost some games to try to slow them down and crowd control the pets and... Uh, it's really effective against Windwalker Monk, so keep that in common, uh, or keep that in your thoughts. You know, if they're on your the Windwalker Monk is on your healer and you drop a ring around him, chances are Zwen and Images are going to get caught in the ring and not really be able to do too much. But in general, Frigid Winds is your main choice. Uh, for the 45 row, I used to only play Freezing Rain. I felt like the instant slow was really strong. So, you know, you, when you Frozen Orb, you basically get a free Blizzard, and you can drop that Blizzard um, for more snares really really good keep people snared that being said comet storm i think is actually really strong um it's something that i've been playing a lot with and i think when i have the four set i know for a fact i'm going to want to play with it every game so um i will we'll explain how to do damage with comet storm but i actually like having the active ability comet storm ends up being a good amount of damage especially if you play with a stun class so if you're playing with like a holy priest or like a holy paladin or a warlock that can actually have someone stunned be able to Comet Storm um, for just like some instant burst when you don't have procs or even when you do have procs is really strong. Thermal Void is the only row that you Thermal Void 100% of the time. Icy Veins duration is increased and then also your Icy Veins gets extended when you Lance. Um, <clears throat> for PvP Talents, which is the next thing we're going to be talking about, um, Deep Shatter, pick it every single game. There's no exception. Auto lock in no matter what. Second talent I say is basically an auto lock in every single game is Ice Wall. Um, Ice Wall is a very underrated ability. People are starting to learn how good it is, and I actually have a section of this video where I'm going to specifically talk about it. Um, but Ice Wall, in my opinion, is the best. Besides Deep Shatter, it's the best PvP talent Frost Mages have. I probably win one, like conservatively, a fourth of my games with Ice Wall, maybe a third of my games from Ice Wall. It's a massive win condition for Frost Mage. Really good defensive and offensive utility spell. I highly recommend you use it if you're not using it. You're probably just bad with it. I'm gonna be honest. Um, you definitely want to be using it, like a hundred percent. Like when AWC was on, and a lot of the you know a lot of the mages that were just starting off on Frost weren't using Ice Wall. I criticized them heavily, and a lot of them started using it and getting better with it, and it started winning them games. And I know for I know for certainty they're very happy that they started using it. It's a very good spell. Um, for your third talent, Frostbite is really nice because basically it makes it so your um, <clears throat> your frost bolts, basically anything that snares can root someone. 
Um, so when you're frost bolting, like chaining frost bolts, you can actually just frostbite people. And that means you don't need a flurry to shatter. Let's like, say you frost bolt someone while well, you have death born up, it procs a frostbite. Your next frost bolt is just going to shatter, which is really strong. It also makes it so your blizzard can root them as well as your frozen orb. Um, that being said, um, this talent can backfire sometimes against, uh, this trinket. Um, this is something a lot of people don't think about, but the echoing resolve procs off roots. So if you're fighting like a Destro warlock or another wizard, and you use your frostbite, chances are it will proc the trinket, giving them immunity to interrupts and crowd control, which is really annoying to deal with. So definitely do not recommend it against that. Um, if you're looking for different options, <clears throat> you can go with, there's two defensive talents that are good, Prismatic Cloak, which I use very often. Um, basically after you blink, you're gonna take reduced magic damage for two seconds, 50%, very strong. Uh, that's probably the one I use the most. You have Netherwind Armor, which I know is a talent a lot of mages like. It reduces the chance for you to be critically struck. So if you are getting trained, it's a good option. And then uh, lastly, um, Concentrated Coolness. In general, Concentrated Coolness is a very low value talent. It's convenient to be able to place your Frozen Orb, but Frozen Orb doesn't do any damage. So the 10% increased damage, almost irrelevant in my opinion. What well, is irrelevant? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's irrelevant. So. I, I just I don't think this talent's good. A lot of mages like to play it, but I think you're way better off having the defensive option, um, and then either uh, frostbite as your main frostbite, deep shatter, as well as ice wall as kind of your main picks is what I would recommend. Um, and then of course we can go over the talents that I think you never really want to play with this build, uh, which would be uh, ice form. I don't think ice form is very good, and the problem with ice form is it gets purged. And if you're playing Ice Form, you likely want to play Ruin of Power. And I just don't think it synergizes very well. Uh, like the, the build that I'm talking about right now with Icy Veins will feel the best. Um, it's the hardest to shut down in my opinion. And overall, it's just really, really strong. So I don't recommend Ice Form. I don't really recommend Burst of Cold with this build. Concentrated Coolness, I don't recommend. And Chill to the Bone, I don't recommend either. So you basically have five talents you can choose from. And uh, yeah, you can go well with those. All right. Now we could talk about comps. <laughs> so for comps with the Necrolord Frost Mage, you want to play Mage Lock. Mage Lock is your best comp. And in my opinion, it is the only kind of like tier one comp that Frost Mages have. You can meme around and play some other stuff. Like I know Wealthy Man and Chun-Li, they play like Marks Hunter um, Frost Mage, but it's not as good as Mage Lock. You can play Double Frost Mage. Um, if you want, not as good as Mage Lock. Shadow Freeze Frost Mage, not as good as Mage Lock. Mage Lock is your comp. So, I I mean, I, I cannot recommend enough to you guys that you find a Warlock friend. <clears throat> there are some some kind of goofy comps you can play if you want with like some melee. I, I, like if you really want to play with the melee, I think Assassination or Outlaw is probably your best bet and to have someone locked down in a kidney shot uh, while you pop your Deathborn and kind of like tee off on them. I think that's probably your best bet. There might be some other comps you can experiment with, but in general, I feel like um, this is by far uh, the best the best comp you can play as Mage Lock. Um, it's, a, it's unfortunate but <laughs> uh, that we only have one comp, but it is what it is. Uh, it was the only way to gain rating last season, and this season it's the best way to gain rating. So, um, yeah, Mage Lock. That's why I play it all the time. It's the best. Now, for twos, uh, the good news about Mage Lock is you can play with a Destruction Warlock, Infliction Warlock, and a Demo Warlock. So you can play all three uh, versions of the Warlock spec, and it's still really, really strong. So just uh, keep that in mind. The next up, twos. Uh, my favorite twos comps. Um, for fun, I, I actually really, really enjoy playing mage lock <laughs> as like a double dps comp you have two casted threats and i find it to be a really like kind of exciting fun way um you know to get out damage and uh you know just get really really aggressive it's not the best comp you'll lose a lot of games but it is fun um you can also play holy priest frost mage which i think is also a really really strong comp um the holy priest is super strong with mage because you have the range stun gives you a lot of opportunities in the game uh, I know this section of the video is probably like very straightforward and obvious, but I just want you guys to know this is really how I feel. Frost Mage basically only has one comp, Mage Lock, and in twos you have one comp that's good, which is Holy Priest Frost Mage. Those are your comps. Okay? Okay, moving on. Your rotation for damage. Um, 
So this is a, a question I get a lot. Your rotation for like just your basic damage is you want to dump your procs. So when, you're, when your Deathborn Icy Veins isn't active, um, you definitely want to be using your fingers for procs. And then of course, when you can, you want to Frostbolt Flurry and then Comet Storm. So if you're playing Comet Storm, they made a change this patch where your Comet Storm actually does not eat your Winter's Chill, which is very effective. So when you get a Brain Freeze proc, you want a Frostbolt, Flurry, and then Comet Storm. And it's a good way to just get out instant damage. If you really want more instant damage, you can literally just, this is all instant damage. You're just gonna Flurry, Comet Storm, Lance to Lance. So that's like <clears throat> an example of like some instant burst you can do. But your basic rotation is just gonna be Frostbolt, Flurry, Lance, Lance, when you do not have cooldowns up, now that Comet Storm's off CD, you can Frostbolt Flurry, and you can Comet Storm, then Lance, Lance. Very, very strong. Now, I use a weak aura uh, to track my two-piece, as you can see on my screen right now. Um, and this is something you might want to consider doing as well. Um, it basically just tracks the internal cooldown of your Comet Storm proc, and that way <clears throat> you can try to shatter it also so now that i know it's available i can frostbolt flurry chances are it's going to proc it and it does and those are all going to crit now and it's just an easy way to get out burst you can even time it with like a double comet storm which is really really strong okay so basic rotation is basically your pve rotation um, and i'll try to show you what it looks like when you get the double comet storms together that's actually quite strong so now that it's off cooldown i'm going to frostbolt flurry and this is two comet storms just back to back which is a ton of damage. I'm on a uh, target dummy, so it's not obviously these numbers, but just a lot of damage to keep in mind. Now, things change a little bit when you have your Deathborn up <clears throat> and your Icy Veins. So there's a few things to keep in mind. When you have your Deathborn um, and Icy Veins, you want to Frostbolt as much as possible. So a lot of the times you won't even use your finger procs. You're going to Frostbolt Flurry and then cast Frostbolts. Okay? Cast Frostbolts to shatter them. Frostbolt Flurry, cast Frostbolt. Into the Winter's Chill, into the Winter's Chill, Frostbolt Flurry, Comet Storm, Frostbolt, Frostbolt, Frostbolt Flurry. You're just spamming Frostbolt basically in Flurry. And shattering with your Flurry over and over and over. Frostbolt, Frostbolt. And this is how you're going to do like the most ridiculous damage ever. And no, it seems weird to not use your Lance procs, but you basically don't want to use them unless you feel like you're going to get interrupted. Or you want to try to finish somebody off, or you need movement. Okay, so like if someone's running behind the pillar, of course you can dump your lance procs uh, to try to chain those together. You can use your your frozen orb as well and your blizzard and stuff. But with Deathborn, it's just all about the frostbolt flurry, frostbolt, frostbolt, frostbolt flurry, frostbolt, frostbolt. If you have comet storm, frostbolt flurry, comet storm, frostbolt, frostbolt. And then if you have to go with the instant damage, you can lance. But that's just something uh, you're gonna figure out and feel out. And then of course. Um, we didn't really talk about it, but you want to keep your blizzard down. You know, people are running. You want to be able to snare them. If they're at a pillar. You want to be able to use your Comet Storm. And then remember, just dump your procs when you get them. When you're not in your Deathborn Icy Veins. And um, that's a really, really effective way of dealing damage. Once I get a... Let's see if I get a Flurry proc. It's waiting. There it is. Frostbolt Flurry. Comet Storm. Lance. Lance. That's like... These are your basic rotations. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very strong. Keep your blizzard down. You know, frozen orb when you want to for additional snares and damage. And uh, that's basically, that's basically it. There's one thing as well I want to mention to you guys. The one thing that you can ice lance for if you really want to is to extend your icy veins. So if you're not actually getting to cast with your icy veins, okay? And I sometimes do this against like pets or uh, totems or... Um, like a Mistweaver statue, for example, if you want to just keep your icy veins active because you can't get to anybody, um, what you want to do is actually use your lance. Lance procs during veins. Okay, so that's another use case for your ice lances is to extend your icy veins um, <clears throat> and lower the cooldown of your icy veins as well uh, while that's up. Okay, so that's basically your damage rotation. Um, keep that in mind and you will find great success with Big Big Dam. Okay, so that is the rotation for damage. Now, we're going to talk about Ice Wall. Now, Ice Wall, like I said, is the coolest spell in the entire game. <clears throat> now, I'm going to get into some MS Paint drawings. 
um, just to give you guys um, some examples of things you can do with Ice Wall, okay? Because in my opinion, it's the coolest spell in the whole game and it's the most fun thing about Frost. So if you learn to use this ability, um, before I show you the drawings, I'm actually gonna teach you how to use it. <clears throat> if you use this ability properly, um, you can you can do crazy things, both defensively and offensively. You can win, you can prevent your team from losing, you can also win your team the game. If you want proof, just go through my YouTube videos and you can see countless examples of me using Ice Wall in really, really creative ways. Uh, like I said, it's probably my favorite ability <clears throat> that's been added to Frost Mage ever, maybe. So keep that in mind. Now, put on War Mode. I'm going to teach you guys how to aim it. A lot of people have problems with Ice Wall. There's two ways that you can aim Ice Wall, okay? So first of all, when you, when you drop your Ice Wall, you can't see it until you uh, channel it. Okay, so this is like Ice Wall 101. You can't use your Ice Wall, or you can't move your Ice Wall uh, until you start channeling it, okay? So when you start channeling it, you just see this wall in front of you. Now, you have two ways to try to spin it. We're gonna use this tree as an example. Obviously, you can just drop it normally in front of you, uh, but you can get way more creative with it than that. There's two ways you can spin it. The first way, okay, is to hold left click to pin your camera, and then use A, to spin your character left or D to spin your character right. So if you have those buttons bound, like turn left and turn right, it's very effective for your ice wall. <clears throat> it's the best way to use ice wall because you can move your ice wall without turning your camera if you pin your camera with left click. So I'll show you an example of that. I'm channeling ice wall and I'm spinning it, okay? Channeling ice wall and I can spin it. Channeling ice wall and I can spin it, okay? So that is the best way to move your ice wall. Left click, hold down A and D or turn left, turn right. Okay. If you don't have those bound, you're going to have to actually move your camera. And the way you're going to do that is by holding right click and spinning left or spinning right. Now this is a lot more awkward. This is how I did it at first. Uh, it can be done this way. It's a little bit more difficult though. So what you want to do is drop your ice wall and then hold right click and spin it like that. Okay. Spin it left or spin it right. This is a little bit more difficult to pull off, not as clean, uh, but if you don't have keyboard turn bound, it's what you're going to have to use, okay? So you can do really, really cool things, you know, like, let's say, I'm going to show you guys some examples. Let's say there's like a caster here, and the healer here, and this is like a little gap. You can just drop an ice wall, and then boom, you've created line of sight. Now, one thing you need to do with your ice wall, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is learn how to cancel it, and you can cancel it by just pressing the button again. A lot of people don't know that, but once you put Ice Wall up, you can cancel it. Now, I also, by just pressing it again, or you can mine it, right click, don't recommend that. It's completely obnoxious to do. And uh, make sure you have good communication with your team too. Like if they want the Ice Wall down, don't be afraid to just cancel it. You know, sometimes you're gonna miss your shot with that one, and that's totally fine. Now, I wanna give you guys some examples. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw some stuff, okay? So, a couple different uh, examples like let's say there is a let's say there's a healer here and then a dps here obviously you can do an ice wall like this and cut them in half okay that's like that's the probably the easiest way to use ice wall is just by splitting them in half but you can do even more creative things than that so let's say you want to use the ice wall defensively and there is um you know a caster here and then there's a rogue here that is on your healer, okay? Um, what I will do sometimes is I was actually drop an ice wall to isolate the caster. So this is like, this is a defensive ice wall. You can drop the ice wall and then obviously line of sight this guy from, you know, combusting or casting a chaos bolt uh, on your healer or on your friend, okay? So that's another great way uh, to utilize ice wall. You can get really good with ice wall Let's say you have a, uh, let's say you have like an enemy rogue here and the rogue just kidney shot your healer. You can actually get good enough with ice wall where you can split them in half. So you can drop an ice wall um, while the, like let's say the rogue kidney shots your healer, you can actually drop an ice wall in between them if you get really precise with it and split them up to actually prevent the rogue from attacking or any melee from uh, attacking. Um, let's say you have a warlock who's stuck in a spear of bastion, okay? So you have a Warlock who's stuck in a Spear of Bastion, he's got two people hitting him, and he can't move. You can tell him to move to one side, and you can drop an Ice Wall to split it. This is another way you can do it. <laughs> I've used Ice Wall 
um, in the starting room of games. So like uh, in the starting room of a game, uh, if someone's chasing me, like let's say I'm in here and you know there's some melee cleaves, I'll blink in and actually wall myself off so they can't get to me. That's another way you can use ice wall. You know, if the entire team is trying to retreat back to the pillar, you can block them off with an ice wall and then they can't retreat and you can just attack them. So you kind of get it. There's unlimited uses. Um, you can block line of sight. You can keep it pinned down so they can't run behind a pillar. Um, it's really, really cool. It's the most fun thing about Frost Mage. Once you get used to it, it's the best spell in the game. The most creative spell. Uh, one of the best spells in the game. One of the most creative spells in the game. Can't recommend it enough. Um, if you don't like ice wall, I, I don't even know what to say. Like I said, you're probably just bad with it. Um, because once you get used to it, I, I really think it's like the it's the thing that makes Frost Mage fun besides being a crazy skeleton lord. Okay, so that's kind of my ice wall tutorial. And then uh, for macros, weak auras, add-ons, etc. Um, we can look at my weak auras really quick um, and see, you know, exactly what I do use. This guy's following me. Um, so I use a few things. Nothing that crazy, um, to be honest with you. I use a weak aura to just track my arcane intellect. When my arcane intellect falls, um, <clears throat> it will show on my screen. Okay, so that's one. Let me do something. Like put my cur cursor on. Uh, so when my arcane intellect falls, it'll show on my screen. Um, I use one to track my altar time. So altar time duration. That way, I easily know when like my altar time does get dispelled, um, and I can cancel it if I need to. I use one to track my battle masters. Um, obviously I use the one to track the two piece for frost mage, the comet storm. Uh, that's another one I use. Um, and then, uh, I have another one for like frozen orb cooldown and blizzard cooldown as well that you can see to the right of my character. But those ones, honestly, I don't use that much. There's not too many weak auras you really need. Um, for add-ons, there's nothing really specific for frost mage. Um, I could show you the ones that I use if you're interested. I use big debuffs. Um, I use details. I use my slot to copy my bars. Omni bar to track uh, cooldowns. Omni CD to track my teammates' cooldowns. Uh, S arena to just have that's my arena frame that I like to use. And then weak auras that I have a couple, um, et cetera, et cetera. The weak auras portion of this video I know it could be better, but I don't think it's that important. And if you guys have any questions, you can always come to my stream uh, with that in mind. So, yeah, that's the guide. I hope you guys liked it. If you guys have any questions, please leave comments. Give the video a like if you found it helpful. And uh, you can always come to my stream, twitch.tv slash Vinruki. If you're looking for, you know, examples of actually playing the builds, uh, I play it live. And I also uh, have infinite videos uh, on my YouTube channel. Uh, like I said, I've been, I've been playing this build for a long time. I think my first video I put up of Necrolord Frost was like six months ago or something like that. So I have a lot of experience with it. Um, you guys can trust what I'm saying. And uh, I have uh, some other builds uh, for Frost that I'm kind of experimenting right now. And uh, we'll have to kind of wait and see. Once I get the four set, I might do some experimenting uh, with a Venthyr build that focuses more on Ice Lances uh, with Disciplinary Command for bonus crit damage. Um, but that will be uh, for a different video, depending on if it works or not. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys liked it. <clears throat> it's a 33 minute long video. If you made it all the way through the video, please tell me what you uh, had for breakfast today. Uh, I'm really, really curious to know uh, in the comments. And <laughs> uh, yeah, enjoy. Good luck, guys. Enjoy the build. It's really, really fun. And with that, I'm Maddie. Bye, guys. Much love.